How long does it take you to walk a mile? If you're average, and let's face it, you probably are, it would take you 15 to 20 minutes to go one mile. 100,000 years ago, Homo sapiens walked out of Africa and kept on walking. And if you're thinking I'm gonna tell you an amount of miles, that your rate of speed is 20 minutes per mile and make you solve for how long that will take, you can stop hyperventilating, cause I'm not gonna make you do math. Enter Paul Salopek. Paul is a journalist who is currently doing slow journalism. Seriously slow, like walking slow. His current project has him following the path of early humans out of Africa and into the rest of the world, a span of 21,000 miles. While he travels, he's interviewing local people he encounters and reporting on what's affecting them. And he's doing it on foot. This is World History Basics by History Hookup. And for the rest of the series, we'll be spending time explaining major moments in human history between when the first human ancestors showed up and our modern life today. Here's Paul's route for the past eight years. With this rate, you can see why migrating around the world took generations to accomplish. All right, so Homo sapiens emerged in Africa around 250,000 years ago in what we call the Paleolithic era or the Old Stone Age. We don't have writing from that time period of human history, but are able to learn about them through their artifacts, bones, stone tools, fossilized foods like seeds, rock paintings, and more. Together, archeologists, anthropologists, botanists, biologists, linguists, and other experts use their specialized knowledge to help us learn about this time period. Early humans lived by gathering wild berries, roots, and nuts and by hunting, fishing, or scavenging dead animals. It's important for you to note here that early humans weren't making their food, they were collecting it. There's a difference that will be important later, so just stash that away in your brain. Humans were nomadic. They moved depending on where the animals or plants they needed would be at certain times of year. Humans kept innovating, like making handles for their stone points and blades. Being the super extra creatures we are, we planned burials and made body decoration, beads, and paints, things that weren't even necessary to survive. Actually, that's evidence for culture. Culture means learned or invented ways of living. Think customs, arts, languages, beliefs of different peoples, etc. Finding these objects in certain places and knowing the materials needed to make them were located in other places means there were larger trade or communication networks. The fossil record shows early humans migrated out of Africa around 100,000 years ago and into Eurasia and Australia. This was all during the Ice Age, mind you. The glaciers and ice sheets took up so much water that sea levels fell, and there was land between what's now Russia and Alaska. They walked across that, probably over several generations, or else they canoed along the coastline. They reached the south of South America around 12,500 years ago, and around 3,500 years ago, humans populated the Pacific Islands. This may not seem all that incredible, but humans have evolved living in the tropical climate of Southern and Eastern Africa. For the same species to migrate to almost every single environmental area in the world requires ingenuity. Some of this was conscious, like in the forms of clothing, shelter, and fire, but others were unconscious adaptations, like loss of body hair or different amounts of melanin, which affects skin color and vitamin D absorption. Let's take a look at how human groups in Eurasia, Australia, the Americas, and the Pacific adapted to their new environments. During the Ice Age, Eurasia was colder than today. Paleolithic peoples adapted by inventing bone needles, layering their clothing, digging storage pits, and making pottery. They also made Venus figurines, which are exaggerated female-shaped objects. These are one of the first artistic objects found. They've been found all over Eurasia, so we can infer that these people had some kind of communication or at least a similar culture over a vast area. They built shelters from the bones and tusks of mammoths or lived in caves. They hunted reindeer and developed spear throwers and stone tools. Maybe most mesmerizing, deep in caves, they left paintings of humans, animals, and patterns. We're not sure what the purpose of these paintings are. They could be artistic expression, early writing, commemorating a hunt, or have religious or ritual meaning. Paleolithic people in Australia arrived after making their way through Indonesia and then likely sailing to the Australian continent. They adapted to Australian food sources, developed over 250 languages, and the concept of Dreamtime. Dreamtime is a combination of stories, ceremonies, and rock art that tells how ancestral beings, rivers, animals, and even water holes came to be. Paleolithic groups in Australia traded stones, paints, and other materials with each other, as well as stories, rituals, and dances. Sometimes these things traveled hundreds of miles, showing they too had some kind of trade network 
work over a large area. Paleolithic people crossed over the land bridge or canoed along the coastline to reach the Americas. They were also nomadic and hunted and lived near large mammals. I mean like huge mammals, like eight feet long giant beavers and 2,000 pound giant sloths and saber-toothed tigers and mammoths. They developed a specific kind of projectile point for hunting large game called a Clovis point, which have been found all over North America. But around 10,000 years ago, we have evidence for mass extinctions of the large animals in North America. It's possible the humans hunted them to extinction or the ice ages end caused the climate to be drier and the animals couldn't survive. Regardless, coinciding with this event, a bunch of different cultural groups started to emerge rather than remaining one large culture. The Pacific Island migration was boat-based, like the canoes in Moana. This was the most recent migration, so most of the people adapted to their new islands by bringing plants and animals with them. It seems they had a drastic environmental impact on these new places. Large flightless birds used to be common there, but they became extinct quickly after the arrival of humans. Also, there was a big decrease in large trees, which eventually meant no more big canoes. These groups shared cultural similarities and traded for a while, but at some point that connection lessened. Paleolithic humans everywhere generally had social commonalities, like living in kinship groups of 20 to 50 people, being nomadic, and being egalitarian. Most people had the same skills as each other, and items were owned communally. However, women tended to gather and men tended to hunt. Women provided around 70% of the food supply and men the other 30%. Most Paleolithic societies had religious similarities of cave art and elaborate burials. We can guess that some Paleolithic groups believed in supernatural beings, ancestor spirits, and the Venus figurines offer some evidence that a religion around a female deity was common. Paleolithic groups also had to adapt to their new environments, but they also shaped them, whether it was hunting the large game or using fire to encourage certain plants to grow. Environmental changes forced Paleolithic people to be innovative. When the Ice Age ended between 16 and 10,000 years ago, it brought in a period of global warming. But this one was natural, not like the one we have today that uh, we caused, uh, but we'll get to that. This warming meant certain plants and animals that didn't do well during the Ice Age could now thrive. Next time, we'll talk about how humans handled this new change.